How do you begin the conversation with someone who is born after 1980? I think it's important to set the parameters of what is expected in terms of presence. I think that is often tough to do. That a, a generation that grew up native to the technologies, often it's more difficult for them to see the value of being able to be present. We know scientifically that it is absolutely essential that you really don't get those mirror neurons firing that give you the information you need about that other person unless you're able to connect with them. So I think that without apology, without embarrassment, without first starting and saying, you know, I didn't get a computer until 1990, um, but without that embarrassment, we can say one of the things that's important for me to really understand what your developmental needs are and for me to be able to help you here is that when we have a conversation, we need to have a real conversation and you need to be present here with me and not distracted. We are, <clears throat> and I thought of this when Maggie was talking yesterday, we are on the frontier here. We are improvising the protocols and the ways in which we will be dealing as a species with this technology going forward. So the answers are not clear yet. Um, but we need to enlist younger people in, in, in the experiment, if you will, of being present. We also need to bring reality to what the expectations are. 20 years of hearing good job when they step into a grocery cart, it's at whatever they do, often you know, displaces, makes people unrealistic in terms of what, they're, what the possibilities are and what they need to work for. Because that constant um, affirmation, whether they've really done anything significant or not, takes its toll. Um, so that's, that's one of the things. I had a very poignant moment, did the National Council on Girls' Education about two weeks ago in D.C., and um, <clears throat> one of the counselors said, you know, I, she's been a counselor at this girls' school for 30 years, and she said, you know, at lunch I used to sit on the hill, and some girl would always come up to me and say, Ms. Jameson, can I talk to you for a minute? She said, it never happens now, because they're all there doing that. So I never get those unbidden moments. And we need to create an environment where they can relearn what some of those connections are. And because that's part of this improvisation of how we're going to deal with that and how we're going to help them. Because they're the ones who are going to be developing the protocols that enable them to be effective in the marketplace while also leveraging that fantastic capacity they have of being a native speaker of this technology. But yes. I, but I think the problem is young people think that by being connected, they are, making, they are having connections and that they are present. They think that being connected 24-7 makes them present. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think you know, there's, there's real research that suggests the extent to which that's not true. And I think there's also often a problem where they actually don't have that experience of being connected, of being, of being unplugged. It's, it's one of the reasons I think this, and I've heard of this. I first heard of the digital diet from the daughter of a close friend who said that she was beginning to realize that her friendships weren't as satisfying as they used to be. And she had a big wake-up call going over to a friend's house at, uh, for a weekend out in the Hamptons. And she said, you know, I walked at night. The mother was sitting here doing this. The father was on his, uh, his computer. The kids were playing games, and no one was connecting. She said, and I felt scared. So I think one of the things is, it's a def delicate balancing act between really trusting them to find what the solutions are, but setting some parameters that say, trust me for now. This is going to be an important skill. This is going to be a skill that you need to have. Because there, um, oh, one of the presentations we had at this a girls council thing was just amazing about the depression among especially young female college students who are always connected and the anxiety that produces. So we've got the research there, but um, 
in the workplace, that's going to be part of our responsibility, is providing an experience where they can begin developmentally to get those other skills. That capacity to be present is part of our power, essential for us as leaders, but is also the deepest source of our refreshment. The possibility of refreshment always exists in the present moment if we are paying attention to it. And being able to bring that gift more and more into a workplace that is fragmented and confused can be part of our legacy and I, I suggest is an essential part of the female vision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.